So uh, the first thing that I want to do is uh, show you that on your worksheets I have the Facebook ad setup steps. So we're going to follow that, but then on the back I have the objectives, and we're going to go through those a little bit too. But here is step number one. You need to get to your ads manager. And I'm just going to show you a few things I've learned as well. So the way you do that is you click the little down arrow right here and go down to manage ads. If you do not see manage ads on your computer, then you'll need to set up your ads account. If you're using your computer, you will need to download the Facebook ads app. Okay, so it's a totally separate uh, app. I don't know if you can go into your manage ads from your phone and then into Facebook, but I know that you can definitely manage your stuff in your Facebook ads app. Okay, so once you get in here, as you can see, I've got a, a list of several clients that I work with, but I'm going to go down to Ads Manager. And another thing that I just want to repeat and reiterate is you've got more tools, and so you have to go down to All Tools to see all of your settings. And for a while, it, I, I could not figure out where all that stuff was. And uh, so you want to make sure to, you know, click there if you need to go create your pixel, things like that. But I'm going to go to Ads Manager. And most of you will only have your one account. Uh, because I do work, I've got several, so I've got to make sure I'm in the right one. Nope, that's not it. Hang on one second. All right, now I'm going to get it down in here. Well, it's not going to let me, so I'll just go here. Okay, so the first thing you're going to click is create, obviously. And you can switch to the quick creation. I don't like the quick creation. I like to go through the guided setup because uh, there are some things I like to tweak and change that I cannot do in the quick creation. Now, if you are involved at all in employment, credit, or any type of housing, you do have to select that you're a special ad category. So uh, I've had to do this with real estate agents. I've had to do this with car uh, salesmen because of all of those laws and, and things that they've got going on. It also, if you are in a special ad category, so that would include you, uh, Alyssa, um, it'll prevent your ad from being disapproved right from the start. So if you'll go ahead and select that special ads, then they'll know and you don't have to go through the appeal process. Okay, so here are what's called the objectives. Now, the objective is basically what you want people to do when they see your ad, okay? Now, over here, they have like a funnel situation where it's like first people hear about you, then they may go to your website and, and you know look around, and then they may convert by actually purchasing, et cetera. The awareness is basically a waste of time. So I don't ever pick brand awareness or reach because it's like boosting. You're going to hit a bunch of people that are not really going to do anything on your website. So I always go over here to either the consideration or the conversion. So I want to go through these uh, just briefly so that you have an idea. I use traffic a lot. Uh, so, uh, like for example, if we want you know people to go to Diamonds Evermore website, we're going to use traffic. Um, I'll use traffic with Tammy Waters real estate page to get people over there. So if you want them to go to your website and look around, this is where, uh, or this is the objective that you would select. What's neat is if you have your Facebook pixel installed onto your website, then it'll collect that data. So then when you serve your ad, it'll use all those people that, that visited your website, they will see your ad. So it can be very good to build that audience, especially if, you know, you've not done a Facebook ad before. So that's a good one. The engagement is strictly for post or ad engagement. So that means that Facebook will serve your ad to those that they know will like it, share it, comment on it, things like that. I rarely use that one as well because, uh, again, I'm trying to get people typically to the website. 
Uh, the app installs, unless you have an app, you don't need to worry about that. Video views can be a very strategic way uh, to get more business and to get more interest. Video views is the cheapest uh, method, actually, of uh, ads. It's literally pennies on the dollar, so you could probably get away with like three cents. And they will serve your ad to those who will watch the full video or at least 70% of it. Now, the reason this could be so good for you guys is number one, it's so inexpensive. Number two, people are watching video more on Facebook than they are YouTube. And then number three, you can use it to, what, to do what's called validating your customer. So what that means is if people are willing to watch your video and, they, and, and, and Facebook collects that data, you've got all those people to now offer the next step. So I've got this opt-in where, you know, five ways to protect your home while you're out of town, like for a real or a, a insurance agent like Mike or whatever it is. They'll, you, you can then offer them that next thing. It's almost like kind of dating first and then, okay, now here's the opt-in and you're seeing who really wants to do business with you and you know i'm big on opt-ins especially high you know con or good content high value opt-ins so if you do the video views do it on mobile only don't do it on both mobile and desktop to validate your audience uh, and the reason why is it's even cheaper and people watch videos more on their phone now than they do on their computer Okay, so that's a really good strategy. Just validate those that you want to um, get that ad to later. Lead generation is new. I'm not sure what I think about it. So basically with lead generation, at first I was excited, but basically what it is, is when someone sees your ad, they can click on learn more or something and it'll bring up a little form for them and it'll auto populate their name auto populate their address and then they can you know give you some information or whatever the problem with it is not everybody updates their email with facebook uh, the other thing is you're requiring a, a commitment right off the bat for them to share with you things about themselves they may not you know want to share so if it's maybe for a real estate agent or you know a car salesman even an insurance salesman uh, something where you think people can get over that obstacle to ask you a question maybe but so far i've not been impressed and i find that it's a little expensive and then this one this one can be good uh, as far as messages the problem is that it's very pricey so they'll serve the ad to those who will direct message you and ask you questions. This is how I originally started doing the ads for face or for a glass doctor, and we actually had to turn them off because they were getting too many messages. Uh, it, but part of it was, you know, the the looky loos, the ones that are not serious doing business with you. That's kind of what happened, and uh, so we decided just. We stopped that and we actually went to video views and that's what worked me out of a job there. And then over here on conversion, um, the messages, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was like $2 per click. Yeah, versus, you know, eight cents for video views. And then that traffic one is so good. If you've, again, if you've got a great website and it, your personality is coming through because um, we just launched one for General Insurance Agency and we actually had it where people would call them. So the call now button and they had 122 calls. And so that was neat, or, or 122 clicks. The average, the industry average per click is $1.25 and we had him, I think, at maybe 75 cents. So the traffic, the video views, those are really good ones. Um, so it really depends. You, you can do split testing and see which one works for you and your industry. And then over on conversions. So uh, conversions is kind of like the, um, I'm in a commitment now. I definitely w am willing to give you 
uh, my email, my name. However, you can go straight to conversions if you have a good landing page, you have a great uh, offer and people trust you, if you can build that trust. But conversions is where you get their information. They'll put their email in there for you and uh, to get your opt-in. So you really need to have something that they want. And then of course, catalog sales pretty much, you know, is straightforward if you want people to go to your website and buy from you. But again, I would validate your audience with video views before going over to the conversion. So whenever I have a new opt-in, like I just created a brand personality uh, quiz, I highly re recommend that you take it at uh, the website. Um, but I would probably do like a video, have them view it, and then later I would create a conversion ad and target those that watch 70% of my video. So that's just a strategy there. But I know people are always curious about themselves because we tend to be narcissistic. So I will probably go ahead and just do a conversions ad for the brand personality and just get it done and build my list. Quizzes are great, guys. Again, if you have not watched how to create a quiz on my website, I would because people want to know about themselves. It's fun. And my email list exploded when I did that introvert quiz. And then the store traffic. That one, uh, I get fussy with it because it requires so much more information and verification that you're real and stuff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's just annoying. But if you want to get people into your building, uh, that's a good one. Uh, we have used that for Glass Doctor. Um, they were the only ones I actually could use it for because everything else has been fussy to try to get them verified. So if you want them to come in, that's a good one as well. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select traffic. Now, the campaign name. I like to name it after my graphic or my video or what I'm trying to do. So let's say that I want them to go to my brand quiz Okay, so I'm going to name it Brand Quiz Traffic because over time you'll have several ads and you may forget what the heck one ad is for. And so you can name them in a way that you'll remember. And so I'm going to put Brand Quiz Traffic. And then up here it says Add Set Name. Now it automatically puts US 18 plus for age. I don't want that. Here I would probably put the graphic or video I'm using. So I will probably do a graphic. So I'll say, um, let's say uh, brand quiz. And then I might say red, because maybe I've got some red in there. Because I'll have like several colors of the same graphic. So um, I'll do that. And then you can uh, have them go to your website an app or even messenger so if you want them to direct message you uh and then whatsapp does anybody have whatsapp yes what do you think about it i, don't like it. I need to download it i always forget until i come in to do an ad and then i forget again later so what what do you like about it what it's great i mean you, you videos i mean you can messaging all that pictures it's great and i think it's at facebook app if i'm not mistaken isn't it I'm not sure okay so uh we, we probably need to check into this yeah because it'll it'll open a thread so you can chat with them so those are the four options you have so i'm going to say website now this is where you can pick your lookalike audience so your audience are those that you want to uh, target with your ad now there's two ways to do it audiences uh, well, actually three, locations, and then down here, detailed targeting. This over here, this audience size, uh, you want to keep it probably at least midline, maybe a little bit under. If you get too specific, Facebook will not serve your ad as well. So you want to stay in the green. I like a happy medium, so I'll usually try to aim for there. Um, but up here at the, the audience, it, again, if you have... A saved audience like your look-alike audience this is where you would pick them if you saved an audience of all of those that watched your you know 70% of your video you would pick them okay now to pick an audience doesn't mean that you can't also use the other criteria it just means that if you've been building that 
database and use that database, okay? So right now, because I could not get into my account to get to my lookalike, um, I'm gonna have to just bypass this step. But all you would do is click here and then it would show your audiences when you click the little down arrow, okay? So the website lookalike audience, something like that is what you want, want to pick because of your pixel. And I don't think I actually created a lookalike audience for you guys um, in this training. So what I'll do is I'll do a, a Facebook live training and I'll get that recorded. Let me write this down real quick. I think I meant to do that. And I'm also going to do a um, training on creating a landing page and an email um, platform using MailChimp. Okay. Okay. Now, I usually recommend if you are a local business to delete the United States and then go out into uh, Clovis, New Mexico. Um, that is very effective. Let's see here. Why is that weird? Okay, Clovis. Here we go. New Mexico. I always go the max out. Um, so you're you're getting 50 miles out. Now, if you want to target some customers that are in Amarillo, Lubbock, uh, Roswell, uh, Santa Fe, all those, you know, just add your, your locations. You can also drop a pin and uh, do that as well. Uh, I, I think it's just easier to type in the city. Uh, this works extremely well for um, local businesses, okay? Now the age and the gender, that's a little tricky because if this is your first ad, you may just wanna leave it alone. And then when you get your reports back that show you the numbers, then you can hone in. So for example, with um, General Insurance Agency, we did an ad of one of their customers, picture native in the office, um, he's a Catholic priest, and all of his staff speak uh, Spanish. So we wanted to target, and he was Spanish, so we targeted, um, obviously, uh, we had the English and Spanish translation of his review. We had his picture on there. Uh, uh, we speak Spanish on the headline under the ad. And when we looked at our demographics later, it was interesting. We reached a ton of 65 year plus women and then we reached a ton of millennials for the guys. It was very interesting. And, uh, but it was so well-rounded, even with the 18 year olds, that we're leaving it alone. And then we'll see what the next ad does. So if you know your target and you wanna reach, you know, uh, for example, the millennial uh, ages, then you would do 25, uh, 24 to 35. Uh, if you know it's for middle age, then change that age. If you only want to target women, then do that. So like with your abstract company, Alyssa, you probably wouldn't be targeting 18 year olds. You would probably be targeting, you know, the range, but I don't know nowadays, maybe they are buying houses. So it just really depends on uh, if you know your market, if you're not sure, just leave it alone. And so that's usually what I do is I just leave it alone for that first ad, I get my numbers, and then I go from there. Now this right here, so we've gone through objectives, this is the second most important part, and this is targeting. So um, for local businesses, uh, you really need to watch your numbers, because I typically do not do detailed targeting, um, because it actually reduces my number. So see over here on the right hand side, right now our estimated daily reach is 1.3 to 3.8 um, people, th thousand people. The link clicks are five to 21. As I've um, stressed, you only have to run your ad for two weeks at a time, $5 a day, that's 70 bucks a month. Now, if you have more money, do it, throw more money at it, but keep it in that two week range because it works really well. I mean, if you wanna do it for a month, you can, you just don't want ad fatigue. So I usually suggest having two, three, four ads that you can turn them on, turn them off turn them on, turn them off, and just rotate. And then whenever you want to freshen things up, do a new ad. If you have a customer that is a just a fan of yours, get them on video or get their picture and their testimonial and do a new ad, okay? So we wanna keep that 
at that level. Now, if I start targeting though, this is where uh, it may drop my numbers, especially for a local business. Uh, so for example, um, I'm working on an ad for K-Bobs and I put in uh, chilies. And so when I put in chilies, you wanna make sure that you don't pick employers that you go down to interests. And then I added um, Applebee's. And we had interest. See my numbers? Now we're, we've really reduced my reach and we've reduced my link clicks because I'm targeting Clovis. Now, if I was not targeting Clovis and I was doing an ad for like, if you have an online business, my reach would go through the roof. But because it's local, you don't even need that detailed targeting. So if your business expands outward, then don't put Clovis, just leave it the United States. Uh, you can even add um, uh, England and, um, well, Britain, because it includes uh, Ireland, all those in Canada. Australia is a different market, so you have to do a separate ad for that. But anyway, so uh, you may not even need to do detailed marketing, but for those that will listen to this video later, or if you have an online business where you need to reach all of the United States, then uh, take off the local uh, targeting and go down here to the detailed targeting. The reason I love targeting is you can target your competition. So what that means is if I was doing the ad for K-Bobs and we were gonna go national with it, anybody that goes to Chili's website or Applebee's website will see K-Bobs ad the very next time they're on Facebook. Okay, so that's why I love targeting. You can target your competition, and uh, but they have to have a big enough Facebook presence. So I think it's like maybe 250k followers on their page, or it might be 500k. So they have to have a big enough you know presence to do that. But it is so awesome, and not only that, uh, I think we're gonna have time. I will show you how to actually look at the ads your competition is doing. It, it's weird. Facebook is just weird. They just we can see everything. But anyway, okay. So detailed targeting. If you're going to go national, use it. If you're local, just use the uh, location and then you can use your uh, custom uh, saved audiences as well. Don't worry about anything else. I'm literally just scrolling through stuff you don't even need to look, like, look at, okay? I'm giving you exactly where to go. Now, placements. I never do automatic. So what I do is I go down to edit. And again, if I'm just doing video views here on all devices, I'm going to deselect desktop. But if I'm doing a traffic ad or whatever, I'm going to do both mobile and desktop, okay? But again, if you only select mobile, it'll save you money no matter the ad objective that you pick, okay? Because most people are on their phones now, so you would probably have a pretty good reach there. All right, unless you have an Instagram account or if, if it's, you know, val I mean, it's very vibrant and you've got a lot of followers, I would not mess with that. Um, I usually don't serve ads to Messenger because I think it's annoying. Um, audience, I might. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go down here to feeds. I will do the news feed. I never do the right column. And the reason why is, do y'all look at the right column? I don't look at the right column. No one looks at the right column, so it's a waste of money. Um, video feeds, I might do if it's a video, but typically I will pick these two, and I'm getting really good results. So at least the news feed, guys but Marketplace has been pretty good for me. So I usually don't do stories, uh, so I'll uh, deselect that, and then I will not do in-stream, okay? Uh, or in-article or apps and sites. But play around, you know? I mean, you may find that your particular industry does really good with in-article, okay? So it just depends. But so far, I've done really good with the news feed and the Marketplace. And I always keep an eye on these numbers over here. If they start going down or anything shifts, um, then I will adjust as needed. Okay, so now that we've got all of that um, picked, down at budget and schedule, you've got where you can uh, select link click, clicks where they'll deliver your ads to the people most likely to click on them, landing page views. 
This is for those of you that have that opt-in or that freemium that people will want to download and get. Um, I don't do impressions and I do not do daily unique reach. To me, impressions is kind of like boosting instead of doing ads, so I don't mess with that. So link click uh, clicks or landing page views. So we're gonna go with link clicks. And then this is where I'm gonna change it to $5 a day. And again, uh, do not set start and end dates uh, because Facebook will use that data and not serve your ad as aggressively because they're in it for money, right? That's how they make a lot of their money. So I always run my ad continuously starting today and then I put a reminder on my phone to turn it off in two weeks, okay? And then let's see here. Now we're gonna click um, continue. Now, add name. Again, I will probably do uh, brand quiz red. And then you wanna pick your Facebook page. So um, I would pick whichever one. Uh, we'll just keep it with uh, general insurance. And then carousel. So carousel, and this is really good for those of you that have products or services that you're really pushing an ad for. So you can take pictures of your different um, products, your different services, and have a carousel where people can just swipe and scroll through your pictures. Uh, most will just need a single image or video. And please remember color on your ads. Uh, you want color because uh, people you know, are just going to scroll through if there's not at least something to grab their eye. So even if you have a black or white image, have some color that pops there. And so I usually will go with carousel or single image. For example, again, with Glass Doctor, I went with carousel to show the different shower doors that they did. Um, that'd probably be a good one for the Porta store as well as maybe carousel. But single image or video, this add an instant experience I've not played around with yet, guys, so I'm not sure. Um, there's some excitement about it, but I'm not uh, knowledgeable enough to educate you guys today. Okay, so now it's time to go to the third most important part, and that is adding your image, your video, and then your copy. Copy is crucial. So I'm going to go in here to add image, and I'm just going to... Um, well, that, that right there is a picture of the gentleman that we got really good results with on that ad the um, Catholic priest, but I'm going to go with this because I want to put a plug in for K-Bob. So didn't know if you know, but they have $10, oops, $10 and under lunches now. $7.99 on most of them. Why is it not changing my stuff? All right, let me close this off. There we go. Oh, it had two. Okay, let me start from the scratch. Okay. So I get my image in there. Now, if you followed my advice and you do square images, you don't need to do any cropping. I highly recommend square images, not just for the fact that you can post them on Instagram as well, but most people are on their phones now and they show up really well. So if you don't have a square image, it'll be a lot smaller and harder to re read print. So you always, always wanna have your mobile user in mind. Okay, and then you can see a preview of your ad over here on the right-hand side. Now, the first three lines of text are all that's gonna show, okay? So you wanna make sure on those first three lines that you grab them right off the bat and use emojis. So um, it could be something like, um, you know, chicken fried steak, all you can eat. Salad wagon, by the way, never say bar. And um, even steak and salmon, okay? So I would probably grab some emojis, you know, like the shocked face or the, you know, 100% or something like that and put them there. But do you see what happened over here? And uh, so, and I probably, just to grab their attention, I would say this one's 799. This one is 799. And this one is 999. Okay. And then you can keep going though. So I would, you know, either 
put some more text here if I wanted. Uh, you could put a customer testimonial, uh, whatever you want. You can make it as long or as, as short as, as you want and then see how people respond. But the main thing is the first three lines are the most important. Okay. Uh, I think I showed y'all examples last time of where I um, had something to the effect of an X and say goodbye to, you know, say goodbye to, like had three lines of X's, say goodbye, and then say hello to. Uh, that was a very effective uh, uh, strategy as well. So anything that grabs your attention. And then the headline. So the headline is, uh, to me, probably just as important as a copy. So I would say... Most seven ninety nine. Let's see, most oops. Because I think that would be, you know, a way to grab them. Like, okay, there might be a couple that are ten bucks, but man, most of them are seven ninety nine and chicken fried steak. What? You know, so I'd provide either some detail that would make them click or I would provide uh, something that would, again, grab their attention. And I usually will add emojis down there as well. Now, underneath there, well, above it, you have the display URL and then underneath you have the news feed link description. What that means is that uh, right now we're seeing the mobile preview. If you type anything for that section, it's not going to show it on the mobile. But if we go to the desktop, the computer, if you scroll down, see this right here, it will show. And uh, so you could put something like, you're in a hurry, but need a home cooked meal. We know that. Nope. I don't like that. Come on in and we'll take care of you. Or come on in, we'll get you back to work on time or something like that. But again, most people are going to be on their mobile phone. So that's optional. I don't know if you need to worry about it too much. But the headline, the copy, the first three lines, and then go ahead and put your website. And you will have to have it. Okay, so we have that there. And then the display link is right here where it says kbobs.com. You don't have to worry about that. It's usually, you know, fine. And then here is where you can have no button. You can have, you know, sign up, learn more, contact us, whatever. One of the objectives actually has a good, good uh, get directions. So it'll immediately uh, put the address and their GPS and they can head on down there. Um, this is where your pixel information will come in. You don't need to worry about that. So once you have your graphic in there, you've got your uh, three lines, you've got your headline, then the final step is hit confirm. Once you hit confirm, one of two things will happen. In anywhere from one to two hours, you'll be notified that your ad was approved. It's live. That's when I put it in my phone to turn off in two weeks. Um, sometimes you'll get a message saying, um, Facebook disapproved of your ad. That's because maybe your website URL, URL didn't match your display link, or maybe they think you violated some type of, you know, um, uh, equal housing or credit, you know, thing. The most common is if you use videos with closed captioning, like I've said, they'll just, um, disapprove it right away because there's too much text. And that's really it, guys. Now, here's what's neat. Obviously, I'm not going to do this because my I'd probably get fired if my clients are like, why did you post a K-Bobs on General Insurance Agency? Okay, so let me get... I really wish I could get down to my stuff. It's frustrating. Let me see if I can show you here. Nope. Okay. Let me show you your numbers. Okay, when you go into your campaign manager, this is where all of your ads will uh, be listed, okay? And um, if you go into view charts under your ad, this is, so you're back at your campaigns manager and ads manager. 
and it will list all of your ads. And we just started this one yesterday, I believe. Um, so let me go to the one that we have already done because we're not going to get good data. Well, poo. I don't see it here. So we're going to have to go in here. Okay. So um, usually, you know, over the two-week uh, time frame, it'll show you how much it's going to cost. Note that it's more expensive right now because when you launch your ad, Facebook is learning your ad, meaning that the longer it's on, it usually takes one to three days. It hones in on who to target. All right, so then your numbers start dropping. So don't let that um, alarm you. Uh, it also shows you how much you've spent so far, uh, how many people we've reached, and how many link clicks. But the demographics, that's where I want to go. So already it's showing me that now on this ad, I've got the 55 to 64 year old men more interested, and then the millennial ladies more interested. Is that crazy? So um, that I actually am more interested in the results than I am the reach. And I will go in there and that's how I will then target my next ad is with the results. The reach is okay, but um, if you wanna know who to target, it's, it's the results guys, because they're the ones that actually clicked. If you go over to the blue right here, you'll see that it costs 28 cents for them to click and call. So anyway, that's, that's once your ad has ran. Um, if you're not getting any results, go to your view charts and look around because uh, you may see that it's just not doing what it needs to do. And if it's not, it could be because the ad's not grabbing their attention. It could be that your copy needs some tweaking. Uh, it could be that um, they're just not interested in what you're doing. But don't stop your ad at least for a week because, again, it takes that time to learn it and then let's see what it can do. But if after a week you've gotten nothing, go ahead and shut it down, tweak some stuff, restart it. And I've had to do that. And the final thing is duplicate. If you want to keep everything the same, you don't want to have to build it from scratch. You can duplicate that ad, put new copy in, put a new picture or video in, maybe change the demographics a little bit, add an audience, whatever you want to do, and it will save you so much time. So that's only if you want to keep the objective the same. If you need to change the objective, you'll need to create it from a whole new ad. But if you want to just keep the objective the same, go in there and duplicate and you'll be good to go. All right, so any questions? I know it's a lot, and that's why I put all of this. Well, not all of it, and that's why I'm recording it, too. So any questions for you guys? I have a question about the, uh, the targeting area. Okay. You deselected the United States, selected folks in Mexico, and then you showed us the, the uh, needle mm -hmm. that indicates how well your ad is going to reach. Mm -hmm. You, you said something to the effect of you always do it 50 mile radius from Clovis for a local business and that seems to work best. If you do a, le a lower uh, mileage radius that it doesn't deliver as well. Do you, well, talk about that and it delivers as well, just not to the surrounding areas. Okay. So if you want to target Melrose and things like that. So for my business, I, I do not do business with Texas residents. And so when I use Clovis as one of my starting points for targeting, mm -hmm. I typically will narrow it down to like 11, 12 miles radius. Hmm. Just so I don't reach too far over. I just try and reach the border. But I would like to go further. So you can do a couple things. So you can do more pins. Mm -hmm. So you could do uh, Clovis, obviously, and then we would do maybe 10 miles. And then you could go and type in Portalis if you want to do business there. And then what other ones are you thinking? Melrose, Dora, Cannon Air Force Base, yeah. you know, things like that. Um, and you have to spell out Fort Sumner, I have found out. And then you would want to um, adjust your miles. So if you want to go bigger, you know, 
or smaller, go ahead and do that for each one of those. And that way you're getting New Mexico and not Texas. Yeah, so just drop in more locations. And you'll see, like, what's neat on the map is it'll show you if they're overlapping. So you can bring one in a little bit if you want. And, like, right here, you wouldn't need, I don't know which one this one is. Oh, okay. So what did I do? Oh, Portalis. We don't need to go that far out. Yeah. So I would bring it on in. But you may have some overlap, so that is a consideration. That answer your question? That was a good one, actually. It's really good. Anybody else? All right, so the content you created, guys, do you have any to go ahead and just get a, an ad started? Or did you just come to the classes and take notes and you've got plans to do it later? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So um, who who is going to do an ad? Because I, I want to try to help you out. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll need to meet. Um, I might can next week. But let's brainstorm a little bit. So um, with you guys, obviously, is it seasonal? No. No. Okay. So it's round year, or round year, year round. What, who are your target audiences? Um, everyone, really. I'm less local, more out of town. So you'd probably do the continental U.S. unless you wanted to target a specific area of the country. Now, what's usually the age range? Is there? There really isn't. So you have a lot of 18-year-olds? Well, we have a lot of Really? Okay. Okay. Right. And so they need to stay there. So you've got working people, but also people maybe that are vacationing? Or do people come here that are vacationing? A lot of people come across country. Okay. Or to go see the awesome rock and roll museum downstairs? Um, okay, so you would definitely be at United States. Your age range would be 18 to 65. Now, they're the RV park. So what would pull you in? If you're, if you're scrolling, what would pull you in to see their ad? Full hookup? You might want to write that down. Do you have full hookup, yeah. I'm assuming? Okay, write that down. What else? What, what graphic? What amenities? What? Their community. Okay, things to do. That's what I do. Because I travel a lot. And so and things to do? And it's like, that's where I pick it. It's like, where is it located? Is it off the highway? Am I going to have a lot of traffic? But am I in, not walking distance, but close enough to enjoy, you know, the surrounding area? Like, yeah. 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 So that you're close to, I mean, I don't know if you could say Clovis has a city life, but yeah. you're, you're close to shopping, restaurants, things like that. Okay. What else? primary target is you know maybe 40 to 65 or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. so would you be better off putting in that target or just leave it open well it, it depends on your product so if you know your target audience is let's say for what I think that what you do 40 to 65 female um, well, possibly Okay. Men and women. I would keep it. But primarily is women mm -mm. age. I'd keep it broad until you get your numbers back. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it broad until you get your numbers back. But your numbers can also be the type of ad you give. If you have like a young, it's targeting millennials ad, yeah. I mean, you'll probably get a different demographic. So if, you, if your ad is specific to a target age group, then go ahead and target it in the, the, age range but if it's just a general then grab all of the the ages until you can get some numbers that's where i have my problem i mean I, my um my population like what i'm trying to grab sometimes i don't know if i want them no <laughs> i'm just joking but um there's just so it's so broad mm -hmm. like yeah I don't even so you'd keep it 18 to 65 mm -hmm. for sure mm-hmm 
Okay, so back to brainstorming. What picture would you prefer a picture or a video of the RV park? Let's just help. Video? Why? Um, because you can filter a picture and videos you certainly can too, but it just gives you a broader... So you want it to be real. You want it to be authentic. So of the park or of them talking about it? Mm, or both? Both. Okay, so you could walk around the park and say, this is what we got, you know? And so then your face wouldn't necessarily have to be on there. You could, like, have it at first, say, hey, I'm the manager, blah, 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 and I just wanted to show you around. Um, we're close to, you know, uh, restaurants, shopping, you know. And, yeah, and then put in your, your copy, you know, anything they might need to know. Um, plug in. Plug in. Internet. Internet. That's, that propane. Propane, Yeah. So yeah. If you're traveling in teams, got to have some kind of cable and internet, and that's the attraction of yeah. the RV park on there. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. So, uh, anybody else, you want some tips for your ad? Because I, I want to look at Alyssa's, because hers is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the reason Alyssa's is weird is it's an abstract and title. Yes. Right. It's, it's but she does a great job. She does a great job, but it's still an abstract and title <laughs> company. Is. So who would you... Same problem with her radio sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... She just did a really great commercial. Yeah, and so we've been able to get, I mean, you know she's been able to get some great results so and her videos are rocking it i mean the the amount of people that watch them it's shocked it's shocked me because we're like will this work don't know let's try and it is so um here's her dilemma okay so i'd love any feedback mm -hmm. she has two targets realtors but also those looking to buy or sell if she targets those looking to buy or sell it's basically we want you to tell your realtor to use us. Realtors, that can be a, t a totally different breed of target because they're just a different breed of people. And, you know, but they're, her, they're very important to her business. So if you were her, what would you do? Would you go after the real estate agents and what you can do for them? Or would you go after the person that's going to buy or sell or both? Two different ads? Yeah. We'll do 75% focused on real estate agents demonstrating confidence mm -hmm. and service and all that. Are you stuff. writing that down? Okay, she is. And then I would do some to the general public. Okay, so probably split ads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that may double your marketing budget to 140 a month. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Yeah. And then with her, again, picture, video, what are you thinking? Both. I don't know. I mean, I like her videos. I, I really like her videos. I think part of the intrigue and maybe why they're being watched, for me anyway, is just her getting in front of the camera and talking about a title company. So, like, it's kind of cool, you know? I mean... It just gets you interested in knowing her and that she's not afraid to do business for you and talk in front of a camera. I don't know. It's just the um, personal aspect of it. Okay. Anybody Which else? People really need, and you know, when they're buying a home, it's like the you have to see the face. Thing yeah. That you can do, so. Yeah. And like we've talked about, you know, some of the greatest fears when you're purchasing a home or selling your home is that the closing will be delayed because someone missed something or, you know, there's just a lot of stress and tension. And so her getting out there with the videos, we felt was, it was very important so that people could know her. Um, I don't know even what you would take a picture of, except maybe some past closings. That would be one where you could do a slideshow or a carousel of past closings, you know, so that'd be a good one. Now, Porta Store. So you guys, like he said, they deliver buildings into your backyard. You know, it's like... They just drop them right in there. Would you want a picture or would you want a video? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, and then, I mean, what about, you know, maybe in a video having a snapshot of their happy customer in them? I mean, would that be something that, you know, you could just maybe put in there as a slide or 
And then if the video, would it interest you to have just like a silent video or with music going and you're like watching the process or would you prefer them to be talking and describing the process? I mean, I think video. it'd be kind of abstract, it'd be kind of cool. So no talking? Like a little kid watching this thing come over his fence. Yeah. Know, swinging or something. Music, it would be, you know. Some music would be better, yeah. And probably like be. an impossible space. <laughs> Yes. Like to kind of point out, like, hey, we can get them anywhere. Anywhere, so. yep. And then the copy could maybe have, you know, um, some of their product information, maybe some rates and things like that. But the video, because we've already talked about it, I, I, to me, that is like, yeah, like, why do we watch cooking videos? You know, I don't like to cook, number one. <laughs> number two, I'm not going to do what they're doing, you know. Uh, but it's just fascinating because you're watching someone create. And so I think a tight spot doing a video, kind of like a, one of the Glass Doctor ads, uh, uh, Elliot Marketing did the video of um, Sergio putting the, the windshield in, and then they fast forwarded it and put some music to it. And it, it was one of our best ads using that video. So, so yeah, um, I, I don't know, you know, if this got if this has helped you guys this last series, but uh, hopefully so. Don't hesitate. I'm serious. Text me call me. I love helping even at no charge. I mean, you can ask most everybody in here. Um, and so if you have an, an ad idea or you're just wondering, you know, will it work? Let me know. And then we might even just, you know, ask you guys. So uh, get to work on your ad and, and get it going. And I would love to see it. You know, if you need help with anything, if you need any critiquing. One of the things that I love to do is look at your copy. Huh, Alyssa? I, I we got a short and pithy. It's got to it's got to catch people's attention. And so, if you um, struggle writing copy, let me know. Especially if you're wordy, if you're a real wordy person, you, I, I could probably get rid of fifty percent of it. Okay. All right. So, any other questions? Because I want to get you guys out of here on time. All right. Well, I'm you know surprised my radio gals didn't you know have like an ad idea or something. Um. I mean. I I, I would love to have an ad. It's just um, I don't I don't like talking on cameras. What? You're an extrovert. No, it, I'm she's not. yes, you are. Whatever. You go around looking like McDonald. McDonald. <laughs> so yeah, I don't think so. Not McDonald, Ronald McDonald. Sorry.